Welcome to CC Rock. I'm Metal Matt, and I'm out here at Canuck Die Harbor in for a great show with. Yes, that's right. We're out here, and you know what's really cool about the Canuck Die Harbor Inn? You know, it says right here, Canuck Die Harbor Inn. It's not just for losers anymore. This place is coming of age, baby. Hey, what? Who are you calling loser? Huh? I'm not calling anybody loser. Who are you? Who are you? Get off my property. This is my land. Wait a second, wait a second. It says here, it's not just for losers anymore. I'm not a loser, you're the loser. You're getting on my land. Get out of here. Excuse they, me. Pig and squeal and get out of here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I do a pretty good pig act, though. Wait, you want to see it? Let me see it. Okay. Squeal, 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 squeal. We'll be right back. Welcome back to CC Rock. I am now backstage with the man, the drumming man, the drumming god, Alan White. How you doing, Alan? Very good. From Yes. Man, yes. 33 years. Hey, what a band. 
what a band, what, what, a, what a career. I mean, you guys have been here, done it. I mean, and here you are back again with Rick back in the band, Rick Wakeman back in the band. And how, how, did, how does that happen? How, how did it happen? You know, one of the most inspirational things for me is that the road crew who, who've been working with us for like 10 years are saying things like, it doesn't sound the same without him. When he's back, there's a chemistry there that kind of fits and the band is really gelling on stage and it's powerful and it's out there you know we, we've been around for a while but the band is playing as good as it ever has really? well I mean tell me about the story about Rick being getting back in the band I mean like I said he's been kind of in and out for a while I mean Keith Ascension was the last live performance I think he did with you guys right back in Santa Barbara yeah, 95 um, 95 96 um, yes but um, you know, I've been talking to him recently after seeing him, after being in England, and he said, I want to be with the band the whole time, but I just went on my own journey kind of thing. So he wanted to be there the whole time. But um, he's playing phenomenal right now. Really, really good. So you guys are enjoying yourself. You did your first show two nights ago in Seattle. Three-hour show. That's for, I mean, a band that's been out 33 years, a three-hour show. How do, you, how, do you, how do you pull that off? <laughs> I lost... 10 pounds that night I think uh -huh. no uh, I think the the uh, the show is good it's a it, it's a good length I think three hours is too much We're, we might have to kind of edit it a little bit but uh, we're giving it a lot of value for money out here it's uh, I'm just in there <laughs> You're just in there just chapping away on those symbols and like I said it's I it's Tapping. <laughs> I said chapping. <laughs> that was a slur. <laughs> now that you got this Yes Symphonic, it's a, it just came out a little while ago on DVD. It's the symphony, the show that actually we saw you last year with, in, with the full symphony. And you taped it in Amsterdam. Right. How was that show? Incredible. Uh, we played with uh, a Polish orchestra that was incredible. Uh, they were great. They came with us on half of the tour. And then um, we had a Russian orchestra for the next half of the tour. And they were great players, just really, really nice people. Loved the band. And um, that's the whole thing. They were kind of like part of the band.
Magnification, which was your last CD you put out a little while ago, it's coming back again as DVD A. Which to a lot of people, explain DVDA because to me I, I understand it's kind of. But you, you being a musician, well, you, you probably know a lot about it. Well, you're gonna have the system to play it. Yeah, yeah. Is it expensive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive systems, but um, it basically it, it's you feel like you're part of the band basically uh, when you're in amongst the audio and watching the screen. If you've got a big screen at home and stuff like that, it's beautiful. Uh, it, it, it and you know I'm really proud of that product. Well, you know here we are, 98 degrees out here in Kanaktai Harbor, the Clear Lake right behind us. And this is this is the place you've been before. You played it before, and you talked about some of these these perks. I mean, like I said, the ski boat. I mean, is this something? Is this a place you enjoy very much coming? It's it, 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 it's good coming here because you you know you see people that are totally dedicated to the band and. Um, it's good to see those people's faces and enjoying everything. And it's kind of what we do for the fans. And uh, we sign autographs and all that kind of stuff. And then, then we're gone. We're out of here. You have a new five CD set coming out yep. in a word. Tell me about this. I mean, this is like, this is like 55, 65. How many songs is this? 65 songs. Um, it's really good. And uh, they, Of course it's good at Jess. Well, they put it, they, there's new stuff on there. Though, uh, that that's really good, and uh, they put a whole package together, and they're promoting it. That's really, really, really good. I, I, it's a great package, and I, I I just saw the cover the other day, and it's excellent. Roger Dean's done a great job, and the whole thing is just like a real c classy kind of thing that's coming out. And next year, I think they're bringing out live stuff. Really? With three CDs. He loves I've got some real estate here in my bag So we bought a pack of cigarettes And Mrs. Wagner's pies And walked out, walked out Michigan seems like a dream to me now It took me four days to reach out the sun
Well, we're back again here at Kanaka Harbor, and we just took out Alan's boat for a little joyride. <laughs> It's all right, Alan. We didn't hit an island. <laughs> we got Chris here now. Chris Squire, amazing bass player for Yes. Right. How are you doing? I mean, this is uh, 33 years we were talking about it before with Alan. 33 years. You've been there since the very first day. Tell me about the band. I mean, since 33 years. Thinking back, I mean, what, what, what hit your mind more than anything? Okay, I've got the mic now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, 33 years ago, uh, John and I started the band. And um, at the, the lineup at the beginning had also included Tony Kay and Peter Banks and Bill Bruford, who was Yes's first drummer. And uh, he stayed through um, Time of the Word, the Yes album, Fragile and Close to the Edge, and then Alan White came on board. Uh, but to backtrack a little bit, um, Peter Banks was around for the first two albums, Yes and Time of the Word. Then the Yes album, Steve Howell came along. And subsequently, uh, Tony Kay left after the Yes album, and Rick Wakeman became the keyboard player for Fragile and, and uh, most, you know, onward to the 70s. We talk about the musical chairs there, and it's, it's a lot of a lot of movement within a band in a sense. There's a lot of bands who these days, I mean, my God, there's some bands out there with just one original member, if that. Here you guys, here you guys are doing it with a lot of the people from the very beginning. Maybe not, not maybe not the very first album. But most of the people, the core is here. I mean, the core, the, the the glory years, you could say. This is probably the best known band. Yeah, yeah, the the, the one with Steve Howe on guitar, Rick Wakeman on keyboards, uh, Alan White and myself and John singing. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, the '80s was an interesting time for us as well, when uh, Trevor Rabin was the guitar player and the uh, 90125 was. Uh, you know, our biggest album actually, and um, so yes, yes has lived through a few incarnations of, of what yes is, and um, I think because we've had the uh, adaptability and the uh, will to change, uh, uh, we've that's kind of been uh, responsible for our survival. Well, you talk about Trevor Rabin. I know he's doing a lot of movie stuff these days, soundtrack stuff. Yeah, he does. And he, he's amazing guitarist. I mean, I love Steve, too. I think Steve, they both have their own little thing going on. But like I said, uh, Trevor was a special part of the band back in the days of talk and, you know, like I said, 90125. 90125, Big Generator, <laughs> and, um, yeah, talk. Keep in contact? Yeah, yeah, Trevor and I see each other, yeah. And uh, he's real, he's working, you know, he's uh, Mr. Mr. Hollywood film music these days. He's uh, earning a lot of money and uh, having a good time. <laughs> like I said, Hollywood, or Holly Weird, whatever they call it these days. It's a, that's a new Poison album. Speaking of albums, uh, Rush just came out with a new album. I don't think you've heard it yet. I, I saw an ad for it. I, haven't, I think I may have heard a track on the radio, but I'm not sure. Tell me about the longevity of the factor. A lot of these bands who have been around for a little while, they are doing amazingly good compared to a lot of these bands who come out and they're around for an album or two and they're gone. Well, that's fate, I guess, or, or, or luck. Um, talent? Or, or talent, yeah. I mean, it, it's a slightly different uh, process now for anyone new coming into this business. Um, you know, it's so much more sophisticated and, and so much more manufactured to a degree. And yet, you know, I, I, I'm sure, you know, I, I enjoy a lot of the new bands. I went to see a No Doubt concert recently. I thought they were fabulous. And, you know, and I've seen Chili Peppers, they're fabulous live. So there's a lot of good bands around. But I think it's just a more crowded business nowadays. And, and it's just more, and therefore it's less likely that everyone can survive. It's just a lot more people out there doing it. How did, how did Rick actually get back in the band? I mean, he's here tonight. He just started the first part of the tour two nights ago in Seattle. You're on stage with him already. How did he get back in the band, and how was that first night? Well, uh, Rick has been, it, it's been talked about him rejoining for a while. Uh, there were a couple of things that, you know, just scheduling, and uh, he had plans and things he was doing, and uh, we, last year, for instance, we wanted to do that orchestral tour, and we didn't really think that was the right time uh, for Rick's return, and uh, but we did that with the orchestra, and, you know, this is the right timing, and and it feels good. It's always something fresh and new from Yes, and you guys have always made, I think, your fans, especially your fan base. How, how, how do you get such damn good fans? I mean, you, some fans have good fans, but you guys got great fans. Tell yeah. me about it. Well, I mean, once again, I'm, I think we're really lucky to have that. And um, I think uh, that, uh, you know, I should be very grateful to them. <laughs> Gods are shining. The lake is blue. Yeah. 
And I think it's time to take Alan's bow out for a little joy ride. <laughs> I finally got away from Redneck Joe. I mean, all he left me with was this darn plastic bag. Can you believe this? Hey, no more poking fun at Canock Dive Resort because this is a cool place to check out a concert. Definitely go up there, check out this great place because they got a beautiful sound system. Really cool place. But spend the night because it's a long drive home. You don't want to be driving home like I did that night. <laughs> Anyhow, if you want to get in touch with me, Metal Matt, give me a call at 925 933 6264. Or check out my website, which is really cool. It's got news, it's got all kinds of good stuff in there which is www.ccrock.tv. Now I'm going to get out of here before Redneck Joe gets my trail again. I hear the hounds are coming. Ah! <laughs> 